Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fabi, and welcome to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to create Dollar Tree DIYs, high-end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. Today, I am so excited. I'm co-hosting this wonderful collaboration hosted by Devin at Freckled Mom DIY. It's a monthly collaboration called Room by Room. And today, it's all about vintage garden DIYs. So there's gonna be a whole playlist in the description box below click on that link and you'll see a whole bunch of creators inspiring you for a vintage garden. I hope you enjoy these DIYs that I created for you today. And if you like unique home decor on a budget, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell to be notified every time I post a new video or I craft live. On Wednesdays at 8 p.m., I like to craft live on YouTube. So join me. For DIY number one, we're gonna be recreating this bucket that I saw at MackenzieChilds.com and it was $98 for the three and I'm not paying that no way no way so I'm gonna try to recreate it using this bucket from the Dollar Tree it's from the Easter season last year and I have a couple of them and they're just so beautiful anyways I took this spray paint by Rust-Oleum in the metallic finish and I gave it one good coat I also painted the inside and the handle once that was nice and dry, I took some of these napkins. I love these napkins. I got them on Amazon. And if you're new to my channel, you haven't seen me use these. But if you've been around here for a while, I want to thank you for always sticking around. And uh, you know how much I love these napkins. So I'll link them below if you're interested. And all I'm going to do is cut off the border. And once I do that, I'm going to fussy cut all these flowers and make sure that I remove any extra plies because we're gonna decoupage it onto this now silver bucket. Once all the spray paint was dry, I just went ahead and I kind of took these cut out napkins, uh, fussy cut napkins, and I just placed them around to see where I think I would like them to go. I took some of this Mod Podge, it's the outdoor type, and I used it to decoupage. So I put a nice thin layer on the surface and then I just lightly tapped on the napkin. It's very important to be as delicate as possible. I love using the sponge brush applicator for decoupaging, but you still have to be very, very careful. This outdoor Mod Podge is very, very uh, thick. So just be mindful of that um, when you are applying the Mod Podge to your napkin because it kind of it kind of creates more friction when you're trying to spread the medium around. All right, so as you can see, I'm just decoupaging, very lightly tapping this napkin into the grooves there and cutting off the excess after everything is nice and decoupaged on. So this is where I chose to put them and I kind of tried to follow the inspiration piece. Um, but that's how it turned out. You could do this with any napkin that you have on hand. I mean, this is such a forgiving project and it's very simple and a lot of fun to do. So once the napkin was on there, I gave the entire bucket a coat of Mod Podge as well so that everything was nice and even. If you're new around here, I would like to welcome you. My name is Fabi, and I'm a DIY mommy of five. I love creating on a budget. I love uh, farmhouse decor, shabby chic decor, um, rustic decor. I, I'm very eclectic in my style, so you're definitely going to see something new and different and unique all the time on my channel. So um, if you're interested in that, subscribe, maybe, perhaps, please. All right, so now I took this color, this gold color by Folk Art. It's treasure gold in the color Mayan gold. It is the most beautiful gold I think I've ever seen. And I love, I love gold paint. But anyways, I gave it a nice good coat around that middle uh, faux ribbon part. I painted over that. I also painted around the top rim of the bucket. And all I did really was um, kind of clean off my brush clean the paint off my paintbrush just by um, rubbing my paintbrush against the edge 
to taking off the paint on the edge of my paintbrush. And then once all that was done, I also painted the hardware on the sides there. And I did the same thing for the bottom, all around the bottom rim of the bucket as well, just so it looks more like the inspiration piece. I really like this bucket and I'm not paying $33 for a bucket. I mean, no way. So then I took some of my Sharpies and I just decided to color it. You could definitely uh, paint it if you like. I just wanted to use my Sharpies this day and um, it was very simple and lots of fun to just use a whole bunch of different colors. My Sharpies are the metallic Sharpie markers and I got them at Walmart. All right, uh, so then I just used some green for the leaves and whatever colors I wanted for the flowers. So then I took some antiquing wax and first I took a little bit of that napkin that was left over from our fussy cut earlier and I just kind of dabbed that lightly in the antiquing wax very randomly but very sparsely around. Once I was happy with the antiquing wax just randomly faintly um, accenting little spots of distressing around this piece I went in with some white wax and I just rubbed the white wax all around just to soften the color of the metal and also blend all the colors together so it's very important for everything to be dry before you use the white wax but that's how it turned out I think it's super cute it came a long way from a one dollar pail from Dollar Tree but anyways I think this is an awesome way to add some vintage flair to your garden for a dollar and I totally forgot to put the handle on, but it's fine. So this is, like I said, a collaboration with my friend Freckled Mom DIY. It's room by room, monthly collaboration, and this is her channel, so check her out. She does amazing DIYs, lots of thrift flips, she does chalk a tour, she does um, renovations in her home. So I'll leave both of her channels in the description box below. Show her some love and let her know that Fabi sent you. For this next project, I'm going to be using this galvanized plaque I got at the Crafter Square, and I'm just going to take off the hanger. Once I struggle for a long time, I get the hanger off, and then now I'm just going to be using this calendar from the Dollar Tree. It says, enjoy the little things, and I took the calendar page that says, be kind, and I'm just going to use that to um, add words to my little sign. I wanted to make a little garden sign just to go with the whole um, bee theme that I'm going for this summer and fall. <laughs> I really love bees. So I thought this would be really cute, be kind. Um, just a little reminder for the neighbors because they're not the kindest people. So I'm just gonna take this calendar page and kind of center it. So I felt, I just try to feel where the plaque was underneath the page and then I kind of scratch the corners to um, kind of like emboss it I guess I wanted to create the shape so that I can cut it out so once I got that cut out I'm gonna use the same outdoor Mod Podge at this point I just I don't know I, I would have preferred using a glue stick maybe even a different Mod Podge because this Mod Podge was really thick and that calendar page is a very tricky type of paper it's kind of thin but kind of plasticky kind of glazed so anyways it it kind of um bubbled up a little bit with this mod podge so just keep that in mind this mod podge is very thick so once i got it on there i uh, added some more outdoor mod podge on top because i do want it to be protected against the elements which is why i think this is such a thick Mod Podge compared to the others because it has to be weatherproof, right? Okay, so now I'm going to use this paint. It's my favorite. It's called Antique Copper and it's by Treasure Gold. The same line as Mayan Gold. And I painted the stick after I marked off the section there where I wanted to adhere it. So I painted the front and the back of the stick, leaving that one little spot exposed so that we can add E6000 as well as hot glue in different spots. I use Gorilla Hot Glue and I'm super happy with how that works for me. I've never had an issue, but you know, feel free to use your favorite adhesive. Just make sure that they're in different spots because I heard it's bad if the two adhesives touch. 
Um, yeah, so once that was secured in place, I just added this metal detail that I got at the Dollar Tree. I thought it would help add some of that antique vintage flair to my garden. But first we're gonna add some flowers. So these are my favorite flowers from the Dollar Tree. They're called pansies, but I think they're so charming and they're so pretty. So I'm gonna take two of these. And once I decide where I wanna put these flowers, wasn't sure if I was gonna put them on the top or the bottom, but I did decide the top because since this is gonna be a garden stake, only the top is gonna to be showing. So that's why I opted for the top. And, and, once I ha and once I got those little flowers adhered, and once I got those flowers adhered, I went in with this metal ribbon. Have you seen this at your Dollar Tree? Because I just saw this for the first time and I just grabbed one because I thought it was just so interesting. I love adding different elements and textures to my, to my project. So I found this and I cut five, two five inch strips of it. Now this metal ribbon is pliable. It's very, um, it's very bendable. So it's very simple to just fold it in half. And then once it was folded in half, I just kind of pushed it closed on top of the wood. You could add E6000 if you wanted to, but this has so much grip that it actually stayed on pretty well this way. And I, I'm not sure if I want to reuse this in the future. I'm not sure how this is going to hold up against the elements, but I will let you know in the future because I love distressing and I love <laughs> because I love distressing and I love, um, you know, like the grungy vintage aesthetic. So I don't mind it if it gets rusty. I think it's just gonna get more beautiful with time. So there it goes. I just did that to both sides of that stick and I didn't do it all the way down because it's gonna go into the ground, right? But there you go, we have our little garden sign. Super simple, super easy using Dollar Tree items except that painter stick which I got on Amazon as well. I'll leave all the links in my description box below of all the items and all the paints that I used in this video today. So then once everything was adhered, I had to bring more metal into it because I love metals. I love mixing gold and silvers. I love the combination. So I'm gonna go ahead with this brushed metal in the color brushed silver, and I'm just gonna outline, randomly kind of um, outline the petals I don't know why I did this. I, I think I was just enjoying this DIY. Then once I was done with that, I went in and I added some gold randomly around these just to make them feel like gilded flowers. And I just love that. Then I wanted to make it a little bit more special. So I added some gold, <laughs> of course. I'm a little extra guys. So I added some gold to the letters and I really like how it turned out. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this project and which one was your favorite today. For our last project, we're gonna be using this planter. This, um, what are they calling it? Yes, planter. And it's a hanging one. And the string is like this white, kind of like nylon. Anyways, I took off the string. I took off, I tried to take off the bottom hardware. It was just not coming off. So I just left it on because if it rusts, I figured it would look really vintagey and truly rusty. <laughs> so I went in with this chalk paint called Cascade and um, I haven't used this color before and I've, I've been so curious to use it so today I use it I go in and I paint that first planter with the Cascade color now I go in with the second planter and I love the shape of it and uh, it was pretty large for Dollar Tree I haven't seen the really 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 big planters at my Dollar Tree so this is the biggest I could go um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this color called Grotto as well. And this is a beautiful color. I think this is perfect for a garden. It gives the perfect pop of color against all the dark colors of the soil and the mulch. Um, but anyways, I love this Grotto color. I go ahead and I also spray paint that giant planter you just saw. And while that's drying, I use my detail tip Sherbonder glue gun and some hot glue any hot glue will do for this part and i'm just going to fill this silicone mold just to add we're going to create some embellishments for our planter once our embellishments are created we're going to go ahead and adhere it to the planter 
So what I'm going to do with these two colors is I'm going to create an ombre effect. It's a very faint ombre effect. These colors are fairly close, but not, you know, identical. So you do see a little bit of a gradient, which I like. And I'm going to start with the dark color on top. I'm going to paint one third under that top lip, I guess. I'm going to paint one third of the planter in the dark grotto color. And then I'm gonna paint the bottom one third of the planter in the lighter cascade chalk paint. And once that's fully on there, I'm gonna go in and mix the colors together and then mix the middle part and then paint the middle part with the mixed color. Sorry, we're only making three colors. We're just painting stripes. It's very simple. And I'm blending them together after all the paint is on there. I'm just going to go ahead and blend it all together to give it a nice ombre effect. To get the middle color, I did mix the lighter color and the darker color together. And I'm going to paint that in the center. Once that's all done, we are going to... So I forgot to mention that I completely painted this planter so once this planter is fully painted once this planter was fully painted I went in and I used this Mayan gold color again to paint the top rim of this planter and I wanted it to be kind of like a watered down gold color so once this planter was fully painted you can't really tell on camera but in person it's very um, obvious so it's just my lighting which why you can't see the, the gradient but uh, once that was all painted I went in with the Mayan gold color and I painted the top rim of this and I only gave it two coats so once that was fully painted I went ahead and then I decided to adhere it um, in hindsight I, I wish I would have in adhered the hot glue embellishments from the mold I wish I would have adhered them before I painted this but um, it all turned out okay it's not a big deal so once that's all painted I also painted the, a little bit of the inside of the rim in case it does show uh, when you have your plants inside of there you also are gonna want to uh, drill some drainage holes if you are gonna use it for real plants or you know rocks on the bottom for drainage but you definitely want to make holes at the bottom of this thing so this is the part where I was um, adding the embellishments we made out of hot glue and I love this technique of making just my own custom made embellishments so I'll also leave that in the description box below if you want to get a mold I think this mold was like six dollars or something on Amazon it's very affordable I like to use affordable things so don't worry about breaking the bank on this channel. All right, so now I'm gonna use some E6000 and I'm gonna add that around the first planter we painted in the color Cascade. And then we're also gonna add um, the hot glue. So I use Gorilla Hot Glue. I'm just gonna use my full size glue gun this time. The same Gorilla Hot Glue sticks in different spots. And I'm just gonna put the second planter on top of the first planter. Now to help give it that vintage distressed look, I'm gonna add a series of colors. The first color I'm gonna use is this bark brown color. And I'm just gonna go in wherever the hot glue is showing, I'm just gonna cover that with this so that it looks intentional. So once that brown color's on there, I'm gonna go in with this color called raw iron. It's by Folk Art and it's, I am so sorry for all the noises. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, I, yeah, I go in with this raw iron color. It's kind of like a dark, dark gray, almost blackish color, but it's just really, really nice. I don't know. I just think it's like a really nice gray. So once I was done with that, I go in with some of this antique yeah. copper again, just to give it some of that rusty, I don't know, just basically put whatever colors you see naturally in rust. I like to add green and blue to my rust as well at times and just like dab it on, layered on with 
like metallics and browns. It's it really is a learning process. Um, but you can distress, you know, whichever way you feel. I just wanted it to look like it was outside for a long time, which it might be. Let's see. But anyways, that's what I did for this part here. I also add the same colors to the top embellishments there. I did add a little tight, like very, very lightly. I, I couldn't show you on camera because my camera didn't show that specific spot, but I just added random distressing around this planter. I think this planter will look really nice in a concrete finish if you were to make like a faux concrete planter, which I might make in the future. Who knows? I love creating just whatever my heart desires. <laughs> so be sure to stay tuned if you like unique home decor on a budget. All right, so here I go adding on the same colors, just distressing those uh, raised edges there. And then once I finished adding the colors, I just wipe it off with a napkin just to make it look distressed and kind of vintage, rustic. Now, I don't focus so much on that bottom lip there. I did at the beginning because I wanted it to look metal in those corners. Um, but I realized that they're not even going to be showing. Those little corners, they're going to be under the dirt. Um, so... Once I realized that, I stopped wasting my time and paint and energy on those bottom. But I guess it depends on where you're going to be using it in your home or in your garden. If those parts are going to be exposed, then you might want to paint it some more. All right, guys, but that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, got some ideas for your garden, adding some pops of vintage throughout your outdoor space. Don't forget to check out the playlist below. I'll leave the link in the description box below for the whole entire playlist of creators who are also creating for a vintage garden theme. I want to thank you so much for watching, for hitting that bell, for subscribing, taking a chance on a kid like me. A special thank you to Devin over at Freckled Mom DIY for putting up with my shenanigans. And thank you so much for watching, friends. Take care. God bless. Catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's some others you might enjoy.